And then it goes into False Reality, which is the first song we wrote for this one. And that's uh, Adrian. Adrian playing drums also, and uh, the low guitar. Kind of like a backwards Zeppelin riff to me. I did it. I did a, a Zeppelin riff kind of backwards, and it, it sounded cool. So I forget what song it's from, but that's what it reminds me of. Gave it to Mike, and he just put these vocals to it that really fit it. It even has a rap part in it, which, you know, we're not. We're not rappers or nothing. It just fit, though. It's a pretty, pretty angry song, and um, he'd have to just, he'd have to explain to you about the, about the words, you know, the lyrics. But the music, it's, yeah, it's baritone. Randy's on a five-string. It's fucking great. It's heavy. It's pissed off. It's good. It's got a bomb at the end of it. Explodes shit like that. <laughs> Huh. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the first thing you handed me. I'm like, oh, here we go. So <laughs> I was excited. So I heard that song. And then uh, it just, the song just speaks for itself. Just so many things going on. And everybody's telling you one thing. And a lot of, most of it's bullshit. And so, false reality. Does it cross, like, is that talking, like, about life in general, a politics, religion, everything mixed in one, kind of? Like, just, but everything's... Everything you hear is kind of like not really real. Is that basically yeah, what you're saying? Pretty much. Yeah. But it's heavy. But see, it's writing. Tracy gives you these licks that it just blow your head off. So you can't come in. You can't come in light. You know, poker game. You can't come in with you know five dollars. You got to come in. You got you to be packing heat, man. You got to come in heavy. So Tracy sets his bar that's way up here. And so I got to take the song and go home and listen to it 8 billion times and then try to match that. And so his song just bleeds anger. Even though he might not be angry, it's just heavy as It's just heavy. I'm so. a pretty happy guy, I think. But, yeah. you know, you got you to get it out. Sure you got to express yourself somehow. Sure do. But on top of it being heavy and you have a good groove, I also think, which is rare for bands and rare for us, we work on it, it's got a really fucking strong chorus, which a lot of these songs do. As we go through the songs, I'll pick, I'll pick them out, but it's not just blistering solos. I don't even have a solo on False Reality, but I don't care because I, I didn't think a, solo, a guitar solo fit in the song because the groove is so happening. So. That's how I write. I just play to what I think it needs. But this this has a the cor it has a chorus. It's not just all these heavy riffs and grooves with nothing you can remember. I think it's got a rememberable chorus. A lot of the songs do, which is the big difference between everything else we did. I think the choruses are stronger. Not just Hooks. false reality. They're hookier. I think. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. A lot of people go, oh, they're a sissy. <laughs> who said that? You're a sissy. You're a sissy. Tell me who said that. You're a sissy and you, you sold out and it's too commercial because it's like, if, it, if things are like, you know, rememberable or hooky, they associate it with weakness or, because, eh, you know, a lot of stuff is trashy garbage like that. I know. But it doesn't come off like that, I, I don't think. It's, it's a strong, metal, heavy song with a cool chorus. That's how I hear it. Which is, it's kind of hard to do. It's it's hard it's hard for us. It's I think for anybody, it's not that easy to make something really really heavy, but make it rememberable without being too sissyish. Does that make sense? Like you know, without getting too stupid. Oh, you got a heavy rip, but the chorus is all like lame. You don't want you don't want a lame. I know you musicians know what I mean, so don't push it. Okay? Don't make me explain myself. Now. You know what I'm trying to say, right? I, <laughs> I think. think. So. 